When wildfires happen, we use models to predict how they'll spread. But those models are missing some critical information. Like how wildfires can make themselves stronger by changing the weather. Without understanding how wildfires literally make themselves worse, we could be putting people and property in danger, especially as the climate crisis intensifies. As our climate changes, many parts of the world are expected to undergo warmer springs and longer summer dry seasons. That means forested areas are more likely to dry out, which means fire danger increases. That will make it easier for fires to start. What's more, with more people moving into wildland areas, those fires are more likely to put human life at risk. And fighting wildfires can be way more difficult than fighting house fires. Wildfires often start in remote areas and can become massive very quickly. That means in order to fight fires safely, firefighters need to know how, when, and where any individual fire is likely to spread. To figure that out, they use complex computer computer models, which take into account the type of terrain the fire is burning in and how much fuel the fire has access to. In our current wildfire landscape, though, that just isn't good enough. That means we're going to have to figure out what else affects wildfires so that we can update our models. And one of the most important factors we need to consider is the weather. The big issue is wind. While strong winds can snuff out small fires, they only enhance larger fires by literally fanning the flames. And fires are likely to travel in the same direction as the wind. Prevailing wind patterns can push fires in one direction, keep them in place for longer, or even split them into two separate fires. But while we do incorporate wind forecasts into our models, those forecasts look at how wind blows on a large scale. Think atmospheric fronts or enormous storm systems. They don't look at wind patterns on small scales, like how wind can curve around a mountain or how a narrow path between two peaks can become a wind tunnel. That happened in the Redwood Valley fire in 2017. Weather models didn't take into account a tiny 11 kilometer gap in the mountains of Northern California, but the wind did. Winds rushed through the gap, creating a small wind tunnel that carried the fire along with it. Again in 2018, winds coming down slope from the nearby mountains pushed a fire into the town of Paradise, California, killing 85 people and virtually destroying the town. Wind can also pick up embers and carry them far away from the main fire. If those embers find the right conditions, they can flare up into new wildfires. That means an updated fire model will have to pay attention not only to which way the wind is blowing, but where embers could land and whether those embers are likely to form new fires. And those are just existing weather conditions. Strong enough fires can also change the weather in their favor. Fires cause plumes of hot air and smoke to rise, and when the fire is large enough, those plumes can get pretty far into the atmosphere. When the plumes hit cooler air in the high levels of the atmosphere, they cool down. Water vapor condenses out of them, forming storm clouds. These clouds are common enough features of large fires that they have their own name. Usually, they're referred to as pyrocumulonimbus clouds. Unfortunately, unlike most storm clouds, these clouds don't tend to release a lot of rain. And when they do, it can sometimes make fires worse. When rain falls into dry air, it evaporates creating a sudden burst of cooler air. This change can affect the wind patterns, creating downbursts around the flames. These downbursts can spread embers, causing new ignitions farther away from the fire. And remember that plume that formed the cloud in the first place? As it rose, it would have also altered wind patterns, creating a massive updraft of warm air. That updraft can create unpredictable winds too, including deadly fire tornadoes. Yes, you heard that right. Fire tornadoes. Fire can cause masses of air to rotate, forming a tornado. We've only observed this twice, once in Australia in 2003, and once in the Car Fire in California in 2018. In the Car Fire, that fire nado had winds clocking in at 140 miles per hour. And not only did the tornado kill four people, it also spread the fire further. If that isn't enough, Remember that thunderstorms also come with lightning, and lightning can start new fires. Altogether, that makes for a lot of complex factors that contribute to fire spread. That means predicting which way any fire is going to move is not easy. Thankfully, there's a whole field of science trying to tackle these issues, from 
different perspectives. Researchers are figuring more things out every day, tracking fires from spark to finish, and working directly with emergency teams to make sure they're using the most updated data. And they are making progress. Updated models which take wind patterns into account have been able to map past fires accurately. That means that when we take the models and feed them the same conditions as historical fires, the simulations they produce line up with how the fires actually spread in reality. It's not that far of a stretch to go from that to predicting how future fires will develop. As these models grow to take into account more and more parameters, it won't be long until they can be used in real time. In a wildfire situation, this could be life-saving. And we're gonna need these updated models now more than ever. Even if we act aggressively to cut carbon emissions, we have to accept that even if we stop burning fossil fossil fuels today, climate change is already here. Which means learning how to survive in a changed world with more frequent, more intense wildfires. And hopefully, keeping more people safe. If you want to help us keep making videos about how science can save lives and also fire tornadoes, consider supporting us on Patreon. We have some neat perks available to patrons, plus you're directly involved in making educational stuff that anyone can watch for free. So if you're already a patron, thank you. And if you're not, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow.